Hey there students, welcome to another video from Accounting University. My name is Nathan and in today's video we're going to be going over how to create a balance sheet from scratch. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm going to move my video over once again so you can see the adjusted trial balance. If you haven't watched the income statement video, you need to watch that first because this leads into the balance sheet. So if you look up here right now, you should see a little link to go watch the income statement video. Now, we're going to be using an adjusted trial balance to go and answer our balance sheet. Um, usually there's lots of steps that go before the adjusted trial balance, but I started midway so I could create these financial statements easily. It's easier to understand this way as well. I will create more videos on journal entries uh, later on. So here we have our um, adjusted trial balance and this goes here with our uh, basically debits have to equal credits. We have everything listed out from our cash all the way down to our interest expense. Now once again, watch the income statement video because I break down how we create the income statement so we can move our income to the balance sheet. So let's go ahead and first start on the balance sheet. I already went ahead and broke out some of the major categories here. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and write in here, this is gonna be our first one, and this is going to be cash. So cash always goes first on the current asset section because it's what we call the most liquid. It has high liquidity, meaning you can convert it to cash. It's already cash very quickly. So cash will go first, and I'll go ahead and make sure here to, uh, let's make sure I get that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and add in here a few extra columns. So insert five above. That way we have plenty of room. So the next one we're going to go through is going to be our accounts receivable. And so we're going to go ahead and plug these in here. I'm just going to, there's only going to be three more. So I'm going to move those over right there. So these are all of our current assets, meaning that these can be converted most likely into cash within one year. That's what a current asset is. So if we plug these numbers in, I'll copy them over. Oh, that's our income statement. Here's our balance sheet. So plug these in here. And we're going to get our total current assets. So let's go ahead and add this up. I'll go ahead and move these out of the way. Delete those rows. And we're going to add these up. All right. Total current assets, $18,950. And I'll make that big. Now, the next section here is going to be our property, plants, and equipment. Let's go ahead and add a few rows in. So property, plant, and equipment is kind of what it sounds like. It's your land, it's your equipment, it's your building, it's your fixed assets that you're going to hold for longer than one year. And so for this example, we only really have one, and it's going to be our equipment and our accumulated depreciation for that equipment. So let's go ahead and add these in here. So equipment first, we'll just copy this over. There we go. And then our accumulated depreciation also will go right here. And I'll make this a negative number. There we are. And so we're just going to go ahead and sum up our current assets and the difference between our equipment and accumulated depreciation. What I'll do is I'll add a one extra row here or what we call equipment net, meaning after we deduct accumulated depreciation. So there we go. And we'll do equals this number plus this number. And that is our net equipment. Now our total assets is gonna be the sum of our current assets plus our net equipment. And there we go, total current assets, 25,070. Let's go ahead and move this out of here there. Current liabilities. So again, current liabilities is the similar concept with current assets, but current liabilities 
it's uh, what you owe, right? It's debt that you owe and you owe it within one year. And so here I see only two. So only two current liabilities. Let's go ahead and plug this in. There we go. And we're gonna actually move these over. There we go. So total liabilities are just gonna be the sum. These two numbers. Make that big. And then lastly, we're gonna do our equity. And so there's only two pieces of equity here. Common stock and retained earnings, that's it. So let's go ahead and move this common stock over, which is gonna be right here. All right, now you might be asking, what's our retained earnings? There's no retained earnings on our trial balance. Well, we did our income statement video. If you haven't watched that yet, please watch how to create the income statement because it shows how we got our net income. Net income is gonna flow into our retained earnings. And let's just assume that retained earnings balance is zero starting out. And all we're gonna do is add in our net income. So what we're gonna do is do equals, and we're just gonna to go to our income statement and take our net income, which is right here. There we go, and I'll format this to make sure it looks correct. That's it. And this is going to be not our total liabilities, but what we call total stockholders equity equals sum of those there. And let's go ahead and add this up. All right, so the next thing we do here is we're gonna go ahead and sum up our total liabilities and stockholders equity. All right, let's take a look. All right, and last thing I did forget, we need to go back and do, we have one more liability that I didn't realize, and it's gonna be our income taxes payable. Because when we did the income statement, we went ahead and took out income taxes because you have to tax your income. So, We'll just move this number over from here, from our income statement right there. And there we go. Let's go ahead and format that. And now it's going to change our liabilities. So there we go. And so now let's finally, let's go ahead and add up our total liabilities and stockholders equity. So equals sum this number, this number. 25070. Now the key with the balance sheet, as you might already know, your total liabilities and equity must equal your total assets. Now let's take a look. I'll bold this so you can see it better. 25070 up and it does equal 25070. So that's about it here for the balance sheet. Went through current assets, property, plants, and equipment and got our total assets. Then we went through and got our current liabilities then our stockholders equity, including retained earnings, and then total liabilities and equity, where they both equal and must balance, I call it the balance sheet for a reason, total assets equals total liabilities and equity. Hopefully that was helpful. Once again, thanks for watching. And in the next video in this series, we can go through how to create a cash flow statement. All right, I'll see you in the next video.